Hello, this is the voice of Stephen. <clears throat> I have a question for you. And that question is a simple one. What if human, our consciousness, and our interaction are directly connected and are affecting the idea of Mother Nature? As ludicrous as that may sound, hear me out. Uh, because I feel it's deeply important. Um, for those of you who know me, I spent many years as a monk in uh, India and Nepal. Uh, studying the Mahayana Tibetan path of Buddhism. They speak quite often of the idea of how connected we as individuals are. I mean, if you think about something, we are directly connected to our experience. We can't separate ourselves from our experience uh, because we are one with that experience. My point is, is we're actually one with each other. Um, most of us don't necessarily realize the concept of that idea and maybe even the depth of that idea. You know, how can we separate ourselves from Earth? Uh, how can we separate ourselves from life? We cannot. That's an illusion of mind. And if all of that is true, what if we and Mother Nature are also inseparably connected? And here's why I say that. If you look back, um, since even as far back as 2011, uh, or 9-11, I should say. <laughs> uh, and even especially since 2006, we can see and understand how weather and the weather patterns have simply been changing. And they're changing more so today at a faster rate than uh, uh, maybe they ever have been. We're seeing weather in proportions that we haven't seen for maybe thousands of years. <clears throat> we haven't seen human behavior at the rate that it is today uh, in modern times. Have you ever heard of the theory of the hundred monkeys? Here's the short version. The theory of the hundred monkeys in essence is this. Once a certain idea or thing reaches a level of 100 monkeys, uh, then all of the rest of the monkey kingdom, so to speak, know and understand that very same concept. Um, the same is true uh, with human mind and human being and the way that we live. Once certain things reach levels in our lives, uh, it reaches all of consciousness. Right now, a human is probably more in turmoil um, and so discontented and so in a state of unrest that uh, um, to the likes and proportions with, with which we've never seen. If we learn to observe uh, human behavior and then related to the weather patterns, I think you'll see the connection. Why? Let's look at this, this past, whoa, maybe even six months. In the past six months, we've seen upheaval in Greece, uh, France, the UK. We've seen it in a fashion here in the United States in our political um, uh, vote that we just had this last November. We see it in places like Tunisia and, of course, Iraq, uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan. But the point is, um, as turmoil increases, it seems to me that the weather patterns also increase. I mean, my heavens, look at the floods that have happened just this year, just this very month, in Australia, Brazil, Sri Lanka, northwestern United States. And if I am correct in my assertion that oneness is indeed true and that we're all inseparably connected, then it would make sense that we're also connected to Mother Nature. It hears us, it feels us, and it mirrors back to us what we are actually producing ourselves. There's one thing I know for sure um, out of my book, The um, Twelve Sacred Principles of Karma, and my book, uh, A Metaphysical Interpretation of the Bible, that we are the cause in this world. And our life is our effect. Even if you look at your life, um, if we take responsibility for ourselves and are in our lives, because once more, we are directly connected to it. We cannot separate ourselves from our lives and our experiences in those lives, whether it's on an individual level or whether it's on an international and global level. It's, we are just so connected to everything that most people don't even consider. That I once read out of the Dead Sea Scrolls this idea that a single human thought has the power to shake the heavens. It also goes on to say that a single human thought is greater than the mighty, mightiest of earthquakes, that a single human thought is mightier than the lightning that cleaves a mighty oak. That's amazing to me. 
And then when you look into the idea of the book of Genesis, it says we have dominion over all things, which means we have the power in this reality. Unfortunately, most people operate from a non-power point of view in their lives. They don't realize the impact that we have not only on each other, but even potentially in our natural environment. And it's from our, our natural environment, which is what I'm the most concerned about, because it's reflecting back to us what we as a global society have become. And all I'm asking people to do is to consider that as a point. Consider that as a point of life. What if we are the ones that are creating in actuality um, these dramatic floods of epic proportions that we're seeing? What if it's us even down to the earthquakes? I know on the surface that may sound just off the wall um, and incomprehensible, but I assure you if you really open yourselves and you look at the ideas that are being presented, you may find the potential that this may be real. In fact, there's only one way that this world could even prove this video on YouTube inaccurate and incorrect, and that's by everybody becoming peaceful. Now, what are the odds of that? Probably pretty slim. But if each of us that are aware, <clears throat> that are aware and have a level of consciousness in that awareness, we can have power and maybe can reach a different tipping point. See, the theory of the hundred monkeys also gives us the idea that even in the realm of negativity, the realm of ne negativity can also uh, pierce the vast majority of human mind. <clears throat> the idea of turmoil and struggle, we're seeing more and more of that daily, uh, monthly, as each tick of the clock passes. And as that takes place, when you look out at the natural world and the natural environment, I mean, we're seeing weather patterns that we've never seen. I mean, we're going to see a superstorm this year. It just depends on which coast of the United States it decides to hit. We've already kind of seen one in Brazil where they got the equivalent of a month's worth of rain in a period of one day. And that's what created all of those floods. The floods in Australia, a wall of water 25 feet high. What's causing that is that global consciousness. We, the human, make up the idea of global consciousness. And we, the human, can shift that global consciousness into a different direction should we decide to take that course as a mass. But all we need is that mystical tipping point. We know through scientific theory that it takes 100 monkeys in an area to reach that tipping point. We don't really know what that is in human beings. We have no idea what that is in human beings. But the more that we can get to live in peacefulness within themselves, instead of getting caught up in the idea of turmoil that we're seeing in our world, because we're all contributing factors, you could say that each individual mind, each individual consciousness is like a cell to the overall global consciousness of the world. We make that up. We create that. We are part of that, and we are inseparable from it. It's just people, I guess, either shirk it off or just don't want to believe it. But we are the contributing point. We are the only living thing in this reality that can realize life. We can realize experience. We can realize the universe. We can realize each other. Yet, we don't necessarily work together. It seems to me that we choose not to that the individual person is much more important than the mass. No. Like Spock said in one of the Star Trek movies, does the need of the few outweigh the need of the many? And that answer is absolutely no. It's about the need of the many. You see, to me, what the world is actually looking for is a way to establish inner peace. Inner peace isn't created by the external reality of our life. It's created within you and you are also directly connected within you. So when the Creator said we have dominion over all things, there's absolutely no question in my mind that that's the absolute truth. I talk about that part in a great extent in my book, A Metaphysical Interpretation of the Bible. We have power that most of us cannot conceive of. After all, the Creator said that we're created in its image and in its likeness, and that we are just like it. So, what if? What I'm offering you is indeed the truth, the truth of where these weather, weather patterns are coming from. They're stemming from our own turmoil. The only way that we can eliminate individual turmoil is through the idea of self-acceptance and to be at peace with our own selves. When we're at peace with our own selves, we can share that peace and all of its sincerity with every human that's out there. It's, this world is not about your color. 
It's not about your belief system. It's not about your religion. It's a philosophy. Life is a living philosophy being written in each moment of every single day. But if I am correct, we are the greatest disturbance to Mother Nature than Mother Nature herself ever could conceive of becoming. She, like uh, uh, in the 12 Sacred Principles of Karma, in essence says that your outer world that you live is created by your inner being. If that's true on an individual level, then it would also be true on a collective level, but even more on a massive scale. When you look at the latest earthquake that happened, magnitude 7274, and uh, on the border of Pakistan and uh, Afghanistan, what if that earthquake was actually created by the turmoil that was there? We can look at the Hades. We can look at wherever geologic activity takes place. Is it because of the struggle of the masses in those areas? And is it because of the struggle of the masses with all of us in this magnificent place we call planet Earth? Again, there's only one way, one way only, that this could be proved to be inaccurate. And that's if the mass majority of us that hear this on YouTube decide to become peaceful in our nature. Not only become peaceful, and when Stephen says be peaceful, he literally means to live in peace within yourself. And that simply means to achieve that, that you don't want to allow the outer world to control you. Let me ask you a simple question. Are you in control of your life? I think all of you on the surface are going to say, yeah, I am. But think of this. Do you ever get frustrated? Do you ever get angry? Do you ever get sad? Do you ever laugh, get excited, get happy? If so, why? Isn't it because of something outside you? And if that's true, now, who's really in control of your life? Isn't it the external world? We at one point were known as human beings. Today, you can look at us and say, we're being human, which is exactly backwards. We have a divine nature beyond belief. It's just up to the individual to locate it and find it. I hope that you all do. I hope that you all hear what's being offered here and take it to heart and then simply begin to practice peace with everything that goes on around you. Practice the path of acceptance. After all, who else are you going to be other than you? When you do that, we may be able to calm Mother Nature down by our direct influence. Whoever said that the Atlantean consciousness still isn't here? No one. They're too busy looking for an island as opposed to realizing that we have that level of ability. We are literally unlimited beings. We are infinite with the power that the vast majority have never used consciously. I teach the art of manifesting amongst perspective. In fact, you can get that download on my website. Find out what you're manifesting. Find out what you as an individual are impacting, not only in your personal world, but in the collective consciousness itself. I hope you can share it with others. Thank you. My name is Stephen Harefield, Dr. Stephen Harefield, also known as an American Wall. Shanti Satyam. In India, that stands for peaceful truth. Thank you.